Here we go. Stand by, please. We're only on six. <laughs> on You're six. Quite good. Yeah, here we go. We have ignition. Strap in. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Welcome to a new episode of the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast. Sponsored by the Built on Dreams Media Network and CelebrityArchaeology.com, with your host Adam Skull. If this is the first time listening to the podcast, welcome, and if you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. Our goal is to help preserve the cultural heritage of celebrity photography from decades past. The on-air sign is lit, so hang out and hear about your favorite film and TV stars. Goldie Jean Hawn born November 21, 1945, is an American actress, producer, and occasional singer. She rose to fame on the NBC sketch comedy program Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, 1968-1970, before going on to receive the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress and the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in Cactus Flower, in 1969. Hawn maintained bankable store status for more than three decades while appearing in films such as There's a Girl in My Soup in 1970, Butterflies Are Free, 1972, The Sugar Land Express, 1974, Shampoo, 1975, Foul Play in 1978, Seems Like Old Times in 1980, and Private Benjamin in 1980, for which she was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for playing the title role. Hawn's later work included starring roles in the film Overboard, 1987, Bird on a Wire, 1990, Death Becomes Her, 1992, House Sitter, also in 1992, The First Wives Club in 1996, and The Banger Sisters, in 2002. After a 15-year hiatus from film acting, Hawn made her comeback in Snatched 2017. She is the mother of actors Oliver Hudson, Kate Hudson, and Wyatt Russell, and has been in a relationship with actor Kurt Russell since 1983. In 2003, she founded the Hawn Foundation, which helps underprivileged children. Hawn was born in Washington, D.C., the daughter of Laura Steinhoff, a jewelry shop, dance school owner, and Edward Rutledge Hawn, a band musician who played at major events in Washington. She was named after her mother's aunt. She has one sister, entertainment publicist Patty Hawn, their brother, Edward Jr., who died as an infant shortly after Patty was conceived. Her father was a Presbyterian of German and English descent. Her mother was Jewish and the daughter of emigrants from Hungary. Hawn was raised Jewish in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and attended Montgomery Blair High School in nearby Silver Spring, Maryland. Hawn began taking ballet and tap dance lessons at the age of three and danced in the corps de ballet of the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo production of The Nutcracker in 1955. She made her stage debut in 1964 in a Virginia Shakespeare Festival production of Romeo and Juliet. By 1964, she ran and taught in a ballet school, having dropped out of American University where she was majoring in drama. In 1964, Hawn made her professional dancing debut in a production of Can Can at the Texas Pavilion of the New York World's Fair. She began working as a professional dancer a year later, and appeared as a go-go dancer in New York City and at the Peppermint Box in New Jersey. Hawn moved to California to dance in a show at a theater across from Disneyland. Hawn began her acting career as a cast member of the short-lived CBS situation comedy Good Morning World during the 67-68 television season, her role being that of the girlfriend of a radio disc jockey with a stereotypical dumb blonde personality. Her next role, which brought her to international attention, was as one of the regular cast members on the 1968-73 sketch comedy show Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. 
On the show, she would often break into high-pitched giggles in the middle of a joke and deliver a polished performance a moment after. Noted equally for her chipper attitude as for her bikini and painted body, Hawn was seen as something of the 60s it girl. Her laugh-in persona was parlayed into three popular film appearances in the 1960s and early 70s, Cactus Flower, There's a Girl in My Soup, and Butterflies Are Free. Hawn had made her feature film debut in a bit role as a giggling dancer in the 1968 film, The One and Only, Genuine, Original Family Band, in which she was billed as Goldie Jean, but in her first major film role in Cactus Flower in 1969, she won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress as Walter Matthau's suicidal fiancé. After Hawn's Academy Award win, her film career took off. She starred in a string of above-average and successful comedies, starting with There's a Girl in My Soup, 1970, and Butterflies Are Free in 1972. She continued proving herself in the dramatic league with the 1974 satirical dramas The Girl from Petrovka and The Sugarland Express and Shampoo in 1975. She also hosted two television specials, Pure Goldie in 1971 and The Goldie Hawn Special in 1978. The latter was sort of a comeback for Hawn, who had been out of the spotlight for two years since the 1976 release of The Duchess and the Dirtwater Fox while she was focusing on her marriage and the birth of her son. Hawn's next film, Maria Monticelli's Lovers and Liars from 1979, was a box office bomb. In 1972, Hawn recorded and released a solo country LP for Warner Brothers titled Goldie. It was recorded with the help of Dolly Parton and Buck Owens. All Music gave the album a favorable review, calling it a sweetly endearing country tingles middle of the road pop record. Hawn's popularity continued into the 1980s starting with another primetime variety special alongside actress and singer Liza Minnelli, Goldie and Liza Together in 1980, which was nominated for four Emmy Awards. In the same year, Hawn took the lead role in Private Benjamin, a comedy she co-produced with her friend Nancy Myers, who co-wrote the script. Myers recalls Hawn's reaction when she first described the idea of the story. It was like watching the greatest audience I'd ever seen. She laughed and then she really got emotional and her eyes would fill up with tears. She loved the image of herself in an army uniform and she loved what the movie had to say. Private Benjamin also starred Eileen Brennan and Armin Asante, for which Horn got her second Academy Award nomination, this time for Best Actress. Horn's box office success continued with comedies like Seems Like Old Times in 1980, written by Neil Simon, Protocol in 1984, co-written by Nancy Myers and Wildcats in 1986. Hawn also served as executive producer on the latter two in dramas like Best Friends 1982 and Swing Shift 1984. You're listening to the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast. Visit us at CelebrityArchaeology.com and learn about the lives of your favorite stars. At the age of 39, Hahn posed for the cover of Playboy's January 1985 issue, in which she was the subject of the Playboy interview. Her last film of the 1980s was opposite partner Kurt Russell for the third time in the comedy Overboard in 1987. Hahn was absent from the screen for four years while caring for her mother who died of cancer in 1994. Having made her entry back into film as producer of the satirical comedy Something to Talk About starring Julia Roberts and Dennis Quaid, as well as making her directorial debut in the television film Hope in 1997, 
starring Christine Lottie and Jenna Malone. Hawn returned to the screen again in 1996 as the aging alcoholic actress Elise Elliott in the financially and critically successful The First Wives Club, opposite Bette Midler and Diane Keaton, with whom she covered the Leslie Gore hit You Don't Own Me for the film soundtrack. She continued her tenure in the 1990s with Woody Allen's musical Everyone Says I Love You in 1996 and reuniting with Steve Martin for the comedy The Out of Towners in 1999 a remake of the 1970 Neil Simon hit. The film was critically panned and was not successful at the box office. In 1997, Hawn, along with her co-stars from the First Wives Club, Diane Keaton and Bette Midler, were recipients of the Women in Film Crystal Awards. In 1999, she was awarded the Hasty Pudding Woman of the Year. In 2001, Hawn was reunited with former co-stars Warren Beatty, her co-star in Shampoo, and Diane Keaton for the comedy Town and Country, a critical and financial fiasco. Budgeted at an estimated U.S. $90 million, the film opened to little notice and grossed only $7 million in its North American theatrical release. In 2002, she starred in The Banger Sisters, opposite Susan Sarandon and Jeffrey Rush, her last live-action film for 15 years. In 2005, Hawn's autobiography, A Lotus Grows in the Mud, was published. In 2017, Hawn returned to the big screen for the first time since 2002, co-starring with Amy Schumer in the comedy Snatched, playing mother and daughter. Hawn has studied meditation. In a 2012 interview, she stated, I don't think of myself as a Buddhist. I was born Jewish, and I consider that my religion. She also stated, It's not the idea of a particular religion that's important. It's the development of a spiritual life. Hawn has had a relationship with Kurt Russell since Valentine's Day 1983. The couple first met while filming the one and only, genuine, original family band in 1966 but became involved after reconnecting on the set of Swing Shift. They have a son, Wyatt, born July 10, 1986. Hawn is also the de facto stepmother of Russell and Susan Hubley's son, Boston. In 2000, and again in 2004, news outlets reported that Hawn and Russell were on the verge of breaking up. During the alleged separations, Hawn was linked to newsman Charles Glass, and Pakistani politician Imran Khan. On the May 11, 2000 episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Hawn quasi-confirmed long-standing rumors, which he previously had denied, of an affair with Warren Beatty during the filming of their 1971 heist movie, Dollars. Hawn and Russell, who celebrated 35 years together in 2018, own homes in Vancouver, British Columbia, Snowmass Village, Colorado, Manhattan, New York, Brentwood, and Palm Desert, California. Thanks for joining us today on the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast, brought to you by CelebrityArchaeology.com. I hope you have found the content we've shared memorable and enjoyable. Be sure to visit CelebrityArchaeology.com to see many of our photos and pick up the link to access our podcast to listen to more stories of your favorite stars. Head over to iTunes to subscribe and keep up to date on the latest episode. You can rate and leave a review and tell your friends about the podcast. Join us next time for the Celebrity Archaeology Podcast and learn about the lives of your favorite stars. (laughs) 